Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 158. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, the angels bending near the earth, their wisdom, their wondrous story told of peace on earth, good will to men, from heaven's all gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Hymn number 158. scriptural this morning will be given by Janet from Georgia. Psalms. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science Textbook. Our Father, who is art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number nine. All glory be to God most high, and on the earth be peace. The angels sang in days of yore the song that ne'er shall cease till all the world knows peace. Hymn number nine.
Welcome to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, which is a very practical training session for Christian scientists. We had a really good one this morning. And so if you didn't get it, or if you'd like to listen to it again, we, we do have it, we will have it on our website, plainfieldcs.com, and it will also be available on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets every Sunday at 11 a.m., and that Sunday school is available to children anywhere. It has its own teleconference number, and many of our students call in from all over the country <laughs> on that uh, teleconference number. So if you don't live in the area, and if you have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll give you the number, and we'd be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting that meets every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And recordings of those services are also available on our website and our YouTube channel, if you'd like to hear them again or if you missed them in the first place. And we have a nursery for infants and toddlers that's available at all of our services. We had a really good Bible study yesterday, and that recording will also be available on our website and our YouTube channel. And we will have another Bible study in early January. So check the website for the study questions and look forward to joining us sometime in January for the next Bible study. And another reminder, the calendars for 2022 are still available. It's not too late to purchase some for Christmas gifts or whatever. The price is $15 for the first one and 12 for each additional calendars that get mailed to the same address at the same time. And we've been busy printing and mailing this week the January full text lesson sermon booklet, uh, the quarterly for the first quarter of next year, and also the December newsletter have all been printed and put in the mail this week to subscribers. And I wanted to point out that there's, there's a little book written by Mary Baker Eddy, that everybody should read this time of year. It's entitled, What Christmas Means to Me. And there is an excerpt from that book that's featured on our website that I want to recommend everybody read, if you haven't already. What Christmas Means to Me by Mary Baker Eddy. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from our magazine, which attests to the healing power of studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Betty from California. I have been a Christian scientist for 82 years. One day recently, while getting into my car, I fell and broke my wrist. The bone in my wrist protruded and my hand was very painful. I knew that I wanted only to trust God and Christian science. I called a practitioner from the Plainfield Church and asked for prayerful help. And with great love, help was given. The next day, I was back at work doing my job normally and writing with a pencil. Within a few days, I was driving my car. Divine love and the power of prayer and trusting God had set the bone into place, 
and I was completely healed. Christian science heals now as surely as it did when our dear leader, Mrs. Eddy, was with us. R.T. New Jersey. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 24 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, God, the Preserver of Man. The golden text is from Psalms. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. The responsive reading is from Psalms. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The whole host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Craig will now read. The Bible. Psalms. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord, thou preserveth man and beast. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Exodus And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? they be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river. Take in thine hand and go. 
Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. And there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses had held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat down thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Deuteronomy. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Second Samuel. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. For thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. Matthew And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went through throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those that were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Acts Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And forasmuch as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, 
desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats of and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning to him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. Psalms. Thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Amanda from Missouri will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The history of Christianity furnishes sublime proof of the supporting influence and protecting power bestowed on man by his heavenly Father, omnipotent mind, who gives man faith and understanding whereby to defend himself, not only from temptation, but from bodily suffering. God pours the riches of his love into the understanding and affection, giving us strength according to our day. Christian science is the sovereign panacea, giving strength to the weakness of mortal mind, strength from the immortal and omnipotent mind, and lifting humanity above itself into purer desires, even into spiritual power and goodwill to man. We have strength in proportion to our apprehension of the truth, and our strength is not lessened by giving utterance to truth. To say that strength is in matter is like saying that the power is in the lever. The notion of any life or intelligence in matter is without foundation in fact. And you can have no faith in falsehood when you have learned falsehood's true nature. Because the muscles of the blacksmith's arm are strongly developed, it does not follow that exercise has produced this result or that a less used arm must be weak. If matter were the cause of action and if muscles without volition of mortal mind could lift the hammer and strike the anvil, it might be thought true that hammering would enlarge the muscles. The trip hammer is not increased in size by exercise. Why not, since muscles are as material as wood and iron? Because nobody believes that mind is producing such a result on the hammer. Muscles are not self-acting. If mind does not move them, they are motionless. Hence the great fact that mind alone enlarges and empowers man through its mandate by reason of its demand for and supply of power. Not because of muscular exercise, but by reason of the blacksmith's faith in exercise, his arm becomes stronger. The scientific and permanent remedy for fatigue is to learn the power of mind over the body or any illusion of physical weariness, and so destroy this illusion. For matter cannot be weary and heavy laden. 
You say, toil fatigues me. But what is this me? Is it muscle or mind? Which is tired and so speaks? Without mind, could the muscles be tired? Do the muscles talk or do you talk for them? Matter is non-intelligent. Mortal mind does the false talking. And that which affirms weariness made that weariness. You do not say a wheel is fatigued, and yet the body is as material as the wheel. If it were not for what the human mind says of the body, the body, like the inanimate wheel, would never be weary. The consciousness of truth rests us more than hours of repose in unconsciousness. It is proverbial that Florence Nightingale and other philanthropists engaged in humane labors have been able to undergo without sinking fatigues and exposures which ordinary people could not endure. The explanation lies in the support which they derived from the divine law rising above the human. The spiritual demand quelling the material supplies energy and endurance surpassing all other aids and forestalls the penalty which our beliefs would attach to our best deeds. Let us remember that the eternal law of right, though it can never annul the law which makes sin its own executioner, exempts man from all penalties but those due for wrongdoing. Constant toil, deprivations, exposures, and all untoward conditions, if without sin, can be experienced without suffering. Whatever it is your duty to do, you can do without harm to yourself. We should relieve our minds from the depressing thought that we have transgressed a material law and must of necessity pay the penalty. Let us reassure ourselves with the law of love. God never punishes man for doing right, for honest labor, or for deeds of kindness, though they expose him to fatigue, cold, heat, contagion. If man seems to incur the penalty through matter, this is but a belief of mortal mind, not an enactment of wisdom and man has only to enter his protest against this belief in order to annul it. There is more life and immortality in one good motive and act than in all the blood which ever flowed through mortal veins and simulated a corporeal sense of life. When we realize that immortal mind is ever active and that spiritual energies can neither wear out nor can so-called material law trespass upon God-given powers and resources, we are able to rest in truth, refreshed by the assurances of immortality opposed to mortality. We apprehend life in divine science only as we live above corporeal sense and correct it. Our proportionate admission of the claims of good or of evil determines the harmony of our existence, our health, our longevity, our Christianity. When the condition is present which you say induces disease, whether it be air, exercise, heredity, contagion, or accident, then perform your office as porter and shut out these unhealthy thoughts and fears. Exclude from mortal mind the offending errors. Then the body cannot suffer from them. Mind is the master of the corporeal senses and can conquer sickness, sin, and death. Exercise this God-given authority. Take possession of your body and govern its feeling and action. Rise in the strength of spirit to resist all that is unlike good. 
God has made man capable of this, and nothing can vitiate the ability and power divinely bestowed on man. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let us now sing hymn number 23. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Blessed Christmas morn, though murky clouds pursue thy way, thy light was born where storm enshrouds nor dawn nor day. Hymn number 23.
now sing hymn number 58. Father, we thy loving children lift our hearts in joy today, knowing well that thou wilt keep us ever in thy blessed way. Thou art love and thou art wisdom. Thou art life and thou art all. In thy spirit, living, moving, we shall neither faint nor fall. Hymn number 58.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal era. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. 